I had an interesting thing happen to me on the way in. So, um, for, for those of you at home who don't know, um, we have a we have like a portable setup for all of our podcast gear, right? It all goes into one big bag, and you know we just carry it around wherever we need to go. Um, so I was carrying it today, and uh, I was getting off the train at Southern Cross, and I was walking, and I was had the bag in my hand, uh, in my left hand. And my hand got a bit tired, so I just switched hands. No big deal. You standard do, procedure. Standard yeah. procedure. You do it a million times a day, right? I'm walking along the platform up towards the escalators at Southern Cross, and I switch hands with the bag, and suddenly, uh, smack. And I didn't realize that directly next to me, this lady walking really fast was like was like right up on my on my inside. Are we talking like and a businesswoman oh, here? Oh. Like she she looked like she I looked like this. she was going. She had a travel bag. She looked like she was probably going to the airport or something. But then yeah. she jumped on the train that I just got off of. So I don't know. But like she was very short. So basically, like like I basically ended up like gut punching her with the bag. Oh, God. <laughs> and I felt. Re- but she took it like an absolute champion. She took it like an absolute champion. Like I stopped and I went, "Oh crap! What have I done?" I turned around, and noticed what I did. And I immediately went, oh, I'm sorry, like, are you okay? Do you need help? And she was just like, no, no, I'm good. And just, Phew! I just took off like a shot. Could that just be like CBD rules? Are people in the CBD just used to a little bit of rustle tussle and just take a couple of hits? I don't even think it's that. I think there's a question to be had about how much space does one person, like, reasonably occupy? Yeah. So, like, you're holding a bag, yeah? yeah. That's already an extension of you. Yeah. Right? And I feel like... Our personal space indicator in public obviously is lessened than what it normally is in private. Mm. But if you're holding a bag like that, surely everyone notices that and goes, all right, give the man a bit more space because you are prone to switch. Yeah. Right? Because it's a heavy bag. Right? Yeah. So that indicate means like you have more space at your disposal. Oh, yeah, definitely. So this woman is walking beside you. Yeah. And that's on her, in my opinion. It, to put it in context, I'd, I'd, I'd moved away from the train, so I was like towards the middle of the platform. And there's all like the vending machines and yeah. stuff there. So I was probably about a meter away from the vending machines, and that's the side she decided to come yeah. in on. Yeah, no, so then, well, that's on her. That's on her. To then cross thing. in, by the way, just to cross in front of me and then get on the train. That's that's the direction it's she on her. to take. Well, this, is one, this is very interesting as well. We've spoken about how do we feel about over t- uh, overtaking someone on foot. Yeah. But do you take on the inside or do you take on the outside? Well, <laughs> because if you take on the inside, I feel like you're just trying to be a bit flashy. Yeah, no, 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 I agree with you. If you take on the outside, you're just doing your job. You just realise that I'm moving a bit faster. But she obviously did not take into account of your extra load. No, no, she wasn't paying attention. She did not sidestep further enough. That's the key indicator there, right? Now, I'm not against the inside overtake, but I feel like if you're going to go with the inside overtake, one, there's got to be legitimate space, person and a half worth of space. You've got to be quick. And you've got to be quick, right? Like there's no 1.5 speed. Right, you got to be going at three. She was, right? she was, she was moving at a brisk pace. No, she was. But was she moving at a brisk pace that was kind of like, kind like brisk, like one point five speed? Like it's a nice walk. It's no, only slightly she, faster. She than was you. on the edge of jogging. Okay, okay, oh. okay. That's the thing. Like she was. Moving I would she grant. Had a meeting. Now, yeah. Now, had she had taken into account the added width now that you need because you're carrying the bag? No. Plus the, not. you know, the the, the the social norm that we accept as a person and a half. Yeah. Had she not taken that into account, I do not accept the, no, no, she the inside overtake. What doesn't what I don't understand is though is that she did the inside overtake to then cross in front of me to then get onto the train. She might as well have taken the outside she overtake. Might as well she might have taken the outside overtake. She might as well have got on the yeah. train a lot it's, faster. It's everything in context though. You need to understand the context. Because I I'm a very, very brisk walker. Yeah. So and you like I take you on the inside lane. Are you an inside or outside overtaker? I take whichever lane I feel like I've got the best shot at. Yeah. Yeah. But I, are I will, you in your I head? I will go around people to then walk in front of them to something that like is on the opposite side of them, like the train, mm. because they walk like a fucking dickhead. No, no and I agree with that. I understand. Like, it, and the thing is, like, especially when I'm at work. Yeah. Right? I have to walk through that goddamn casino floor. Yeah. Hospital workers will be brilliant at the inside outside Dude, outside dude, outside dude, we, dude get, I am, I am, if I'm walking, feet. if I'm walking from one side of the casino floor to the other, yeah. I am looking three, four, five steps ahead of me yeah. when I'm going like, okay, I'm going to dodge this bloke through like on the outside of him, on the inside of this group. Yeah. I'm going to go through the middle of this group because for some reason there's three of them that are taking up an entire row. Yeah. And you know who it is, David? I do, I do you this. know who it is, David? Go it's on. All, it's all. It's all <laughs> It's your family. <laughs> <laughs> it's just no, like... No, my kind, like, like, people, we dawdle, right? Like no, we, we, we look around, I, we look like, around and like, we're like... Oh, because yeah. a lot of people, you know, you, it's just on the casino floor, they're just like, oh my God, look at all the colours and the lights. There's, and a, the, there's a lot of stuff. And I'm like, I need to get from here to here as quick as I can and you are in my way. Now, for the most part, at the casino, there are like back routes we can take off the floor that are quicker, but that's a lot of waiting for lifts, waiting for escalators that are our private, you know, little ways. 
if I need to get from one side of the casino floor to the other, I'm going on the floor and I'm just dodging, weaving, whipping, just getting between everybody as quickly as possible. Have you, you ever... Think, you think three to four people ahead of you. You don't... There's none of this mucking around. There's a certain strategy. No, I was going to yeah, say, like, hospital is. workers are trained this way. Like, it's embedded in you. Yeah. Right? But, like, are, are you ever, like, low-key sitting there going, all right, now I know i got to go across the casino floor. At this point, surely you're playing a game and going, all right, it's a busy day. I reckon I can do it in a minute. Yeah, no, I've, yeah, I've, 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 like, it I've done it before. Like, I've like, okay, how quick can I get from point A to point B? Especially like a Saturday night when it's just like there's people everywhere. Mm. And it's like, say like if I'm doing a graveyard, five o'clock in the morning, I'm good. It's empty. But if it's like 2 a.m. Saturday night, peak service, and I need to like go on break or something, and the quickest way from my current venue to the break room is right up the guts of the, like the main casino floor. It's I'm actually like, all right, how, how quickly can I do this? Because I have a mate who, um, he, he's a dealer. And so they their shifts is like an hour and twenty. Hour, uh, how, yeah, dealers get a break every twenty minutes. Every twenty minutes. What? No, sorry, sorry. They get a twenty minute break every two hours. So every two hours. So like, but uh, because he's obviously in the middle of the floor, he has to know his, his exact routes if he wants to get a smoker quickly. <laughs> well, imagine he's, pull- he's like to me. He goes, man, it takes me four and a half minutes to get to the smokers. It takes me about three minutes to have a cigarette. And then by the, so he's fully he's clocked. <laughs> I love it. Head. And I, I do the same thing when I'm doing when I'm going to university. Anything you always do the the little clocks that you yeah. know you, you, you like. Oh, it takes me five and a half minutes to get here. Oh yeah, yeah. six minutes here, twelve minutes to walk there. You know the the incremental little times that you need to do, and it's so funny that hospital workers just seem to. Well, it's it's like because uh, most of us would have most of us would have started as as glasses. So that whipping and, and ducking yeah, yeah. between people when you're mm. on like a, a busy dance floor trying to grab glassware. That's when it develops, and then like the more you work, even like re- restaurants and stuff, when you've yeah. got like three plate carry and you kind of go between people that are in your way, you just like that lateral movement is just yeah. ingrained into your body like, at some point, and you just know how to do it. My first hospital job was in a very small, very popular cafe, and dealing with little kids and on a Sunday and things like this, you are constantly dealing with just. Swishing your feet, even very small movements just to get past little toddlers running past your feet. I've seen a man almost pour a latte on a child's head. <laughs> it is not a fun day when that happens. No. no. So no. you've got to be very quick with your feet. And it's, it, it is, it, you don't realise that these kind of skills will help you in life. Mm. But when it comes to on the street, having quick feet really does help. We would all know, because we all went to Swinburne, right? We all went to Swinburne. So I imagine we would all know this, um, that from getting the train station, walking up that alleyway, right, and then making that right turn towards Ian, right? Now, that to me is the most, like, psychological torture you can go through as a first year because not only social norm dictates if you're walking, you're on the left side of the, left side of the, the, the street and then the oncoming is on the right side. But you got to make that right turn to get into Ian building. A lot of people take that a sharp right turn. Yeah, they take well. a sharp. They oh, go there yeah. and then they bang right. Right. <laughs> what I'm getting at is I'm planning my banging right, like as I get off the train. So I have a good three minutes of walking, going. All right, now I need to assess the traffic coming towards me, the traffic ahead of me, where I can slip through. Am I going inside or outside lane? And then I've got to go. All right, now I've got to make the sharpest of right turns to get into Ian, lest I have to skip that door and go all the way around. Right, because that's just extra cardio that I'm about. But it's that sharp right turn where you can just tell all the first years are kind of like slowing down, going, "Oh wait, no, I got to go through there." But they're not. They're not judging that. Well, I would say traffic. during Owick, it might be quicker to duck onto Main Street than cut back. Up. I reckon. Yeah, absolutely. But that's is. that. That's just insight for Swinburne students. Yeah, it absolutely is. But what makes that particular situation worse is when you're filming a student film. <laughs> oh, the, oh we, no. yeah, we, which uh, Dave and I did. We were we, we made it. We were making a film um, uh, for a film festival, and we used that spot just to like to just to do a really simple like walking up the stairs scene, like a really simple one. Honestly, the whole thing took maybe ten minutes, but that's like a pretty highly trafficked area. So basically, traffic stopped there and it caused like a bit of a pile up even though i was like just keep coming through it's fine because i wanted extras in the background of people just walking around to show that it's like we're not in a deserted <laughs> building it's like this is a this is like a city type area right but everybody sees the cameras and stops right it's the complete opposite to america in america like world star if you if you if you have a camera out everybody wants to talk to you um and with that welcome to pine party a podcast designed to turn a beer and a chat into a tax write-off i'm your host john mcleish and joining me uh, is uh, is our you know, regular regular main man, David Yang. David, welcome. What up? Uh, also joining us uh, is the wonderful Ricky Needs. Ricky, welcome. Hello. And uh, coming back again once more, hopefully 
uh, we'll be able to hear you this time. Uh, Lachlan Beasley, welcome. I'm hope, hoping to come through nice and crisp today, John. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to be good. Me too. I've um, been t- told to work on my etiquette, and that is today's plan, boys. Yeah. It's, it's all going to be learning. Part, man, part, part of it's not just your fault. Part of it's my fault. And um, and that's this is something like I kind of believe in, is sort of like if you have a problem, you address it on the platform you had the problem with. So uh, our last episode, episode six, um, it wasn't wasn't that great. It wasn't wasn't really good, um, and and that's my fault. Um, but I'll tell you what, I uh, I learnt me lesson that day, and that is uh, you got to learn what your number is with mimosas. You got to learn your number. Like that's a thing. I've heard people say that you got to know your number, and it never really made sense to me because I, I'm a beer drinker. I mean, I run a podcast called Pint Party. We drink beer. That's who I am as a person. I am John. I drink beer. And uh, so usually when I drink beer, right, it kind of bloats you up. So by the time I get bloated, which is about, you know, I mean, look, I'm not a heavy drinker. So I get like three pints in and I'm done and I get bloated and I stop. And then I might get a bit tipsy. I might, I might kind of go, Ooh, like, you know, get a bit of a, you know, a light head, but that's about it. Right. And then give me like 10 minutes and I'm okay. Uh, but with mimosas, you can just sink those things like they're Tic Tacs. Ooh, boy. I feel like they're designed that way. Like yeah, good really alcohol. Are. And when like, I'll say goo, like Why quote do you think unquote. they're mainly only seen at really fancy events like polo? Yeah. Yeah. For yeah, sure. easy to sit back, bro. Easy to sit back. But beers are designed to be heavy, though. Yeah. Well, yes. Right? But that is like the biological indicator of it. Like you yeah. sink them, and it's because they're a heavy and they're very carby too. Well, then you get right? involved. Then, then that's just normal beer. Then you get uh, IPAs and XBAs, and they're like eating a full meal. Yeah. 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 Oh, and then and then you get into like the Guinness drinkers, and Ooh. I'm like, I don't even know how you do that. <laughs> Anyone who can smack half a pint in of Melbourne, Guinness is especially fucked. what. Why are you drinking Guinness in Melbourne? We all. Why know are you drinking Guinness in general? I, I could not be more vocal about drinking Guinness, Guinness in trash. Ireland. Sure, go all for it, Ricky. How do you feel about Guinness? Uh, Guinness, not so much. Kilkenny, yes. Okay, okay I no, love fair. that. It's like drinking caramel. It is so smooth. It's so sweet. I've spent many a night at the Elephant Wheelbarrow here in Melbourne, putting them back like they're mm-hmm. nothing, and then waking up the next day. And uh, I think it was Adam Hill who uh, well, Adam Hill's made a joke about this is like if you drink stout the next day it'll come out of you exactly the same as it came in oh yeah <laughs> Bla- so guinness black with a white bit of foam on top um oh. and kilkenny's exactly the same it'll come out nice deep brown with a bit of white foam on top it is just it, it now when we say coming out yeah no the other end oh the other end yeah, okay yeah. all right yeah, yeah no it, it straight, comes out straight through like mate. a little straight bit through of, yeah no like no digestion like, happened yeah 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 your body just like makes a little bit of mr whippy on top and just like nice white foam <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, it, it, it is a meal. It and is. Like I, yeah, and that's I, what you hear about Guinness. I used to work in an Irish pub and yeah, Guinness was like, I know how to pour the perfect Guinness. Um, but a little more, it's little more top? Drinking or? it, drinking it is tough. Mm. Like Guinness for me is like, it's a, but I'll tell you what, okay, the one Guinness drink I liked and I had this as a knockoff one night after a guy suggested it to me. Captain Morgan with Coke in a pot glass halfway up. And then you back pour. So on a Guinness tap, yep. there's the full mm-hmm. pour, which is pulling it forward. And then back pour is pushing it back. And that's how you add that nice bit of creamy head on the top of a Guinness. Oh my God, I'm learning so you, much. You back pour. I do pour. not know this. Did you not know there's two ways? I, I genuinely, yeah. when, I, when, I'm, when I think like, of a gimmick tap, I just think you pull it back and then nah, that's it. There's it's, no only, pour. it's only Guinness and like stout taps that have the back pour fe- feature. Mm-hmm. So you back pour a Guinness head on top of the Captain Morgan and Coke. So you can't create a Guinness head just on a front pour. Well, it's funny because... Well, it over foams. At my, that back pour yeah. is like a nice gentle stream. It's not as yeah. violent as the... Whereas like normal taps oh. will have just a very aggressive foamage. Yeah. Because like the one that I had at my old work, they had a very aggressive high high pressure. So, so the strategy so, is you got the glass, you pull front and that's where you yep. get most of the beer and then you got to pull you, back just to get the foam on top. And then you well, got to let it rest. Yeah, right. You so you, you, you pour up to So the, much effort just to pour a fucking beer. You pour up to the there's bowl. A lot, there's a lot more effort that goes into it than people think. Yeah, like, no, there's, there's, a there's a bit of an art form. It, there's, there's a, a genuine art form to pour yeah, I, I, I wasn't allowed to serve a Guinness until I was there for about two months. Really? You got to go through Guinness training? I had to like learn. Was that the Irish pub that you were at? Yes. Okay, that's so interesting. Because we had a very select group of people that only drank Guinness when they came to this pub. Yep. yep. And, and if they, they drank a bad Guinness, they would fucking flame you. Exactly. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. So I had to learn how to pour them for about two months before I was allowed to actually like serve them to customers. Did you I have to d- take a class? No, no, just like the, the <laughs> most senior bartender. He's got a cert two in pouring <laughs> Guinness. I do, I do, yes. Um, there is a class you can take though. Yeah, no, there is. There I'm is. sure there's like the, contests the, and... There's, there's, Guinness, no, no, there's, like, there's, there's a whole there's like Guinness bartending. course you can do. Yeah. Like in Ireland, they've got the Guinness, uh, how to pour a Guinness um, like 
tr- certification. Guinness offers it. In Ireland, I would not be surprised if it was an undergraduate degree. You can go, no, like, it's not an undergraduate. No, no, it's like a, it's like a one day <laughs> thing. It's part of the brewery tour. You go yeah. on the brewery tour, and part of what they offer is how to pour a Guinness. It's like the thing. Um, I only know about this because I saw uh, like a today I learned on Reddit where they said that the reason why they knew it is because their local bartender had it up on the wall. Oh, lol. <laughs> Pride of place. I would. I am certified. Honestly, that. man, that's something that you, you would rep. Yeah, I would rep it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you, you know, she I was have, like, I have a, a Heineken certif- certification. From Heineken or yeah, from, from Heineken? That's yeah. pretty dope. Yeah. Like, they literally came and just showed us how to pour a pint. And I was like, I know how to do this. And the guy was like, You're doing it wrong. I'm like, What? And he goes, Yeah, no, you got to do it like. <laughs> An it, insult it, to my there is, there is There is a specific way that Heineken likes you to. And they like the, the really tall pints, not the real fast uh, stout yeah. ones, like the Imperial pints, like we have. Yeah. yeah. So, like, there's a Heineken way to pour a pint. And I yep. had to learn. And now I've got to, like, I've do got they, a Heineken certification. Do they test to see what. Looks most most aesthetically pleasing in what like yeah. beer glass? It's all it's all market research. That's oh, for crazy. sure, everything is market research. Yeah, yeah. I love, I love this how area of business. This yeah. is what I'm saying. This, it's crazy. Just like what what people think. Like just just the just what people think about. Sorry, just like what. Find your thoughts. Sorry, just thinking that um. Just the amount of detail that some uh, some people put their put effort into mm. is just crazy. Yeah, especially like, when oh yeah. it's just a drink. It's going to be saying. consumed like, in a matter of minutes. People are not a lot. Of, like the masses are not thinking about like the details like Heineken are. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, but, like it's all it's all subliminal, any, subliminal mm. anyway. Like, I have not worked a minute in hospital in my no. life, mm. right? And that's why, like, seeing this perspective, and, like to me, I just I just order a beer. I just go, hey man, can I get a pint of that? I don't even care what it looks like in a fucking glass, right? But behind uh, the scenes, excuse me, you don't care what it looks like. Oh, as long as it fills up a pint glass, I don't care. You you constantly have a go at me for it. But let's be honest, you also look at it like you like. Oh, I don't really like that color. Oh, I wish it was. Oh, a when bit it comes light. to like, uh, that was my entry. Now that I've experienced being a beer drinker for a while, now I'm at a point where it's like, well, if you're gonna pour a beer, don't 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 give me fifty percent head. Yeah. Right. I, but at the same time, I'm not gonna be like, oh, there's like that much head. I'm really gonna be so fucking pissed but off about it. You, you, but behind the bar. You know, you're seeing the bartenders and they got all these like gimmicky pours. Now I know there's one for the Guinness too. I'm yeah. like, I didn't know. I thought it was just you pour the beer. If, and if, then you just have like a, an indicator of like two fingers. That's as much good head as possible. Oh, uh, dude. Nah, dude. Okay. So uh, I went. I actually went to bartender school. Um, I say bartender school. It was a two week thing and half of it was barista training. But we spent three whole days on how to pour a beer. Like three days with like two hour sessions of us just running, pulling beers through the tap. And um, then I got I got work placement at a at a pub near um, what used to be called Eddie Had Stadium is now Marvel Stadium near there, and they do a lot of like like you know uh, cricket matches and stuff around there. Yeah. Um, and so you get a lot of the older crowd that come through, like old older cricket people who come in for the test matches and stuff. And uh, and as a result, though, they're used to their beer looking a very specific way. Right, and if you've got more than a thumbnail's width of head, they will have a go at you. They probably say the same thing about the guys at the Carlton Room over the MCG. Uh, yeah, because that that's a big members only bar, and I could assume there'd be a lot of guys who'd be a bit cranky if yep. Steve didn't pour their beer the exact way they've been pouring it for thirty years. Yeah, uh-huh. but it's not. But it's not even like if you do. It's not even like if you do more than a thumbnail's width, they'll have a go at you. And even if you do less than a thumbnail's width, they will have a go at you. It's got to have the thumbnail's width. Well, any, did any of you know the, the, the purpose of head on beer? Uh, Is I it not just don't. aesthetic? Because honestly, no, I don't taste no, I'm it. Sure, I'm sure it's to do something with the carbonation or like... It is. It is. It is uh, partly <laughs> to keep the carbon... So the bubbles... Oh, rise, I can see that. But they run into the head so they can't pop. Yeah. So yeah. the beer stays carbonated. And also it is the fragrance. Mm. So half of what you do... That's, this is the Heineken training. He said, what is the first thing you do when you, when you have a beer coming towards your face, you smell it before you taste it. Yep, true that. And if you have a flat... It's really the rule of life for anything, though, actually. Well, no, it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Before like, you're about to eat like, or consume something, you're going to you take get, a whiff. You get the fragrance of a beer <laughs> from the head, not from the beer itself. Yeah, yeah. So if there's no head, you're smelling nothing, essentially, and then it hits you the taste, and then it's flat or not carbonated enough, and then all of a sudden you're having a shit beer. So you need that head. And with, a, with the Heineken training, it's the, the whole like rule of thumb, whatever it is, thumbnail, whatever, mm-hmm. that's bullshit. Like it's a good, good portion of head. Like more, so than more like, like different beers dictate different. Well, yeah, it, yeah, it, it is such an art to it. It, it, it is very true. Like you take a Carlton draft, 
You don't need much. And any sort of head on it is going to keep it carbonated for as long as you're going to drink it because you're usually drinking it as quick as possible because it's cold. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. getting rid of it's it. Cold. So the fact that you risk, ordered it was the problem, go. actually. Yeah. Something you want to savor and sit on like an IPA, like something like a, a fancy craft beer. You want a lot of head sure. because you want it to stay fragrant for longer. You want it to stay carbonated for longer because it's probably something you're going to sit on for a little bit. You're not going to just slam it down. It's a conversation beer. Yeah. It is. I don't exactly. even, what is the best conversation beer? It would definitely be like an, I reckon, yeah, an IPA, something a, like a really hoppy beer. So obviously like something scout. that has to last and you have to, yeah. s- and can sit really well. A pale, a Pacific. Yeah, a pale, pale would, a pale would be the go-to, I imagine, for a, like, yeah. like, having a good combo. Like my dad loves a 50 Lashes James Squire. Yeah, um, one fifty that, that is uh, to me that is a very uh, middle aged man beer. It yeah, is. that's the dad uh, beer. Is it? It's a, it's a bit that's of a dad such beer. a dad beer. It it is. Is. Me and my mates used to go to the James Squire brew house like every weekend. It's and you're really a dad good. kind of guy, bro. Man, that's all I would drink. Like, this is when I was nineteen. <laughs> When it when it started out, it was a very like I was drinking it when it first like popped up. It's and good. Now eh? it's now that like they've been like they've been bought out. James Squires mm. by one of the bigger ho- bigger corporations. It's now mass produced, so it's not as doesn't yeah. feel as special. No. Wait, and that's happened to, like Furphy as well. Like Furphy got bought out by <sighs> Lion Nathan, and now Furphy is like oh, I went to the Furphy Brewery. I have had. It's not there in Geelong anymore. It is in Geelong. Is it still in Geelong? Geelong? That's yeah. the it's home the, court advantage, bro. It's at the Little Creatures Brewery now. That's what no, that's what that's oh, what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I have had extra Furphy. It's this exclusive oh furphy God. they have at the brewery that's like furphy turned up to 11. Stop. <laughs> Stop. It is amazing. Stop. It is so good, man. Stop. This, this whole entire podcast and all our fans know how much I fuck with furphy. <laughs> <laughs> now, if I'm going to hear this shit, I'm going to have to take a road trip. <laughs> uh, Dave, like, that's, but Dave, don't you don't you harken back to a few episodes back when you said you were going to do the uh, half marathon, the uh, half Ironman challenge? Yeah, and they're going to fucking sponsor we, me. We, no, we were going to do the one in Geelong and we were going to do the brewery yeah. tour. If we're running past the brewery, I'm not finishing the marathon. Yeah. That, that's it. No, no, that's the what, carrot. That's the carrot, though. You do the marathon, the then we do the brewery tour. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That can be your little reward. At the that's end. your reward. You're that's your little brewery tour the next day. Yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. That's that. Yeah. That's that's the carrot. I'll be, wait, I'll, at me, bro. I'll be waiting at the finish line with a but you, cold one. No, a fucking cold a pint, one, bro. A pint of furphy extra, just oh, for you. Stop it. Stop <laughs> it. Get that good stuff. It is. It is really good. I'm like, mate, my the, mate needs this. He needs this to finish. I can't finish without furphy. This actually leads into an interesting discussion I had with uh, you, Lock, a couple of weeks ago. Yes. We, I, was, I brought up this point. I reckon, and because we're just talking about pubs, it leads perfectly in. Mm. In the CBD, I reckon you could go a block, oh, yeah. a block before, you, before you found a coffee shop. Any longer that you, you any block, mm. you will find at least one coffee shop. That's in Melbourne for sure. In the CBD, I, I write up CBD every block, one coffee shop. That's you'll it. Be, you're at, you'll be able to get a coffee at any block. Mm-hmm. Now, I mean, when you say coffee shop, there are plenty of places that will serve coffee that aren't technically a coffee shop. That's Mc, right. And that's McDonald's, why, for instance, exactly has a cafe. You can get a coffee. Yep. Any block uh-huh. yep. in the CBD. Yeah. Right. I'll go as far to say you could walk in excess of three minutes and find a coffee. Yeah, if we had to put I a time stamp on. Honestly, in the CBD, I think I could just look at one shop front and see a coffee shop. Yeah, from yeah. Every shop front. Yeah. I reckon that's it. Which then, like, I came up with that rule, and now I've extrapolated over to the country. I reckon in every block you could find a pub in the country. So this is why I need to take you boys to a chuka. All right. <laughs> because, and okay. This was proven true when we went to Shepparton. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's see, I, I did. I did want to ask you guys about this. Okay. So can I just talk about my experience with your trip to Shepparton? Just, just real quick. So I'm sitting at home, just chilling out, having a having a pretty chill day, playing Final Fantasy 14 as I want to do. Um, uh, which yeah, and uh, so and then and then I get I get a snap from Dave, which is not an uncommon occurrence. In fact. While Dave was in his exam period doing all of his exams, he wasn't on Snapchat, which, which is a good boy. I praise you for it. I praise you for it, by the way. Thank you. Thank but, you. But he, here's the thing for me, though, right? When you don't snap for more than 12 hours, I get genuinely worried you've died because, <laughs> because you've, you've established a pattern that, that as part of being within the realm of Dave you are to receive snaps approximately once every 12 hours. 12 to 16 hours. Sometimes you're having a bit of a lazy day, which is fine. Everybody does that, right? So when you don't do it for more than 12 to 16 hours, I get worried that you've died. So I get one of these snaps, and uh, I look, and suddenly it says, oh, I'm on, I'm in Shepparton. I'm like, how the fuck did you end up in Shepparton? Because in my mind, you were still in Melbourne. So in my <laughs> mind, you just teleported, teleported. to Shepparton. <laughs> actually, actually... Real quick side side story about about this, 
David has had a bit of a Carmen San Diego moment um, a few years ago with me, where um, he went up he went up to he went up to China for a trip, right? And I knew he was going up to China, and then I knew he was coming back to Melbourne, and I knew roughly when he was coming back because again I got the snaps every twelve to sixteen hours. Uh, and so I thought, oh, he's back in Melbourne today. That's cool. I expect to see another snap of him in Melbourne. I'm expecting a, an airport selfie of some kind, right? And I get the airport selfie and I go, okay, cool. He's back in Melbourne. Uh, and then a few hours later, I get a snap of him in Sydney. I went, hold, <laughs> oh, true. I went, I went, hold the phone. <laughs> hold the phone. Wait a minute. You were just in Melbourne. What are you... And I actually, and then I needed to talk to, I can't remember why I needed to talk to you, but I needed to talk to you for some reason. I, it was about something. I can't remember what it was. Anyway, uh, I wanted to talk to you about something. And so I sent you a message, a voice message. And I said, David, I literally do not know where in the world you are right now. And I really didn't. Honest to God. You could have shown me a world, would not have known where he was on earth. Wouldn't have, couldn't tell you. Right. And I said, I do not know where in the world you are right now. Because you don't but have, I need to talk to you. <laughs> you don't have snap maps on, do you? Yeah, no, I turn that shit. Whoever has snap, you, you, if you have snap maps on, you're either below the age of eighteen, right, or you don't know how to turn it off, <laughs> right? Like I had no. I don't like having snap maps on. No, bro, I, I can't <laughs> have snap maps on now, man, because I'll get called out. No, right? don't don't you have to have it on if you want to have the geotag um, filter? No, no, you can turn no. it off. You can put it in a ghost mode, and it's all fine. Oh, okay. The amount of times I've been like pulled up with my snap map on after I've given yeah. a lie and yeah, then just gone, oh, I, no, see, no. I see you're over here. <laughs> you said you were coming out later tonight. Why are you over in Geelong? Uh, and then I get ripped off. I had to turn it off. But like I said, if you <laughs> you either have snap maps on if you're under the age of 18 because it's such a gimmick with the kids nowadays or you literally you? just don't know how to well, turn to it off. Well, to be fair, it's more fun when your friends are in like a general radius of you. Yeah, but I'm not saying it's not fun. All I'm saying is I've been pulled up enough times to go, look, it's now actually becoming a detriment to what I'm trying to do. No, I'm fair. getting called out. So yeah, so that's that's David and, and his and his and his Snapchats. Just to put this into perspective. So I get the snap that you're in Shepparton. And honestly, I had two thoughts. First of all, you'd magically teleported to Shepparton, and I thought that was a bit of a trip. That 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 made my head spin for about half a second. And then my second thought was, how come you didn't tell me about it? Because I, I would have told you to go and visit my mum. She's Aww. she's two towns down in Violet Town. Man's needed right? a day away, and she need, and, and she she's a barista working in the cafe in town. And quite frankly, she needs. I would have loved. I would have loved and to have a cup of she, tea with you. By the way, I'm I'm just going to put put over my mum here for a minute, right? She does all, like she put she, over all mums. I'll put over all mum. Yeah, but I'm going to put over my mum specifically. What can I say? I'm biased. You know, full full, full disclosure. <laughs> um, but she does like homemade little cakes and scones and stuff. She makes it all. She makes it all at home and then brings it into the cafe to sell. I as well as coffee, scone, scone, jam, and cream. I could tell you what. Yeah, she she makes it herself. She yeah. does it herself. In fact, in fact, you know. So yeah, uh, she, she you know, and she's even thinking about entering competitions and stuff. Her stuff is that good. So I man, you got to go out and got yourself a good coffee and a scone and had a bit of a Melbourne experience in the countryside, a little taste of home, so to speak. But anyway, what, Lockie, you were there too, so I want to bring you in on this. I what on there. earth were you two, like, what What made you decide, you know what, let's go to Shepparton? Honestly, it was a bit of a daycation. Uh, I needed a daycade, Lockie needed a daycade. We're just like, fuck it, let's go up. We, we had business to attend up there anyway. And honestly, it was a good day business of mulling. Business to attend in bro, Shepparton? When, bro, I do business, we mulled, I do business, bro. And I've got a list of shit here that we're going to discuss. We, we Who are you, mulled Walter White? We a lot of ideas over. We, we've come up with a great... Bant Bank for us to work off. <laughs> the Bant Bank. <laughs> the Bant Bank. I love, bank. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, and David, do you just want to whirl one off the top? We'll, 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 we'll just pick a Shepparton topic. Shepparton is a lovely, yeah. beautiful town. I love Shepparton. To On God, like, would I, open I, up a regional I, know, I understand it has <laughs> has gossip and rumours to be the meth capital or one of the meth capitals. Uh, it's, not just, it's not just rumours. <laughs> there was an official like census that was released and it's like the most meth per capita is around Shepparton. And mm -hmm. I'm not going to yeah. say we didn't see tones. When we were sitting at um, McFarlane's pub. Yeah, the, the, the local the pub. The local one Irish. One of the local pub on that block, actually. Um, <laughs> yeah. We, we did happen to see a man pedalling a bike for all, all of his worth. It is texting at the same time. I've never seen anything like it. That is the giveaway. <laughs> that is the giveaway. If you're like, oh, you see a bloke on a bike. Literally, the, the look is draping hoodie. He's got no helmet on. pants. One hand on the handlebar. Flanny's on. Flanny. Mobile in the other. Not even looking at the road. He's and just, he's, just, he's just texting. He's just texting. And he's just perusing down the street. Nothing screams, I push drugs more than that. But right? it's all right because I'm sure the locals know him. 
Oh yeah, he probably um, gets a good like, good bit of business. I mean, aside from actually coming up to you and going, "Hey, mate, you want some drugs?" <laughs> <laughs> and That's like, if you had stayed around the Shepherd is, though, long enough, if anyone that would have happened, everyone in Shepherd knew straight away that me and David went from Shepherd. Yeah, we had we had a very classic Melbourne look. Yeah, I was going to say like David I reckon was wearing different textures of black, and I was wearing denim. So yeah. no, you were both wearing denim. Yeah, we we're, we're, were rocking our denim. You were flannel. doing the double oh, denim. Not denim flannel, denim jackets. Which you were wearing. We no, you were. Actually. You were wearing a denim jacket. I was wearing a denim jacket. He was wearing a denim jacket. I remember he was. the snaps. Oh, was he? Remember yeah. That. You were literally there with me for 12. Fuck. <laughs> right. You just got a selfie together and you were both wearing denim. Oh, I no, thought double were, denim no, in no, my you're head. Right, right. I reckon the denim jacket. He wore, he wore it for like that fit. photo. That was it. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you know. I, I don't know about Dave's wardrobe outside of snaps. He, he, I'm time sure if he popped the trunk of his car, he would have just had multiple outfits ready to go. But Bro, I, I come I come equipped for every occasion. I know you do. I come equipped. In my gym bag, I have on to, uh, like on the go gym clothes yeah i know like you just never know when i'm gonna work in a sesh for ref- for reference if anybody wants to get an idea of what dave's talking about watch the film crazy rich asians there's a scene where aquafina ends up so at, true. at like the really rich people the crazy rich asians house and she's like oh my god i'm at the crazy rich asians house i need an outfit and she opens up the back of her car and she's got all these outfits just like ready to go all yeah. labeled and color coordinated i was like like I, honestly so respect true. to that character you know what i mean she was and she was organized and that's why you didn't belong in the country no, <laughs> we still got like a sore people, goddamn people, people thumb. You do. We went to the you. we went to the visitors center. I don't yeah, think oh, yeah, I don't okay, think yeah. anyone has stepped foot in there. F- it, it was brand new. <laughs> it looked <laughs> like it just been painted. Like we funnel, walked in funnel. there. There's a woman. The woman who was working the desk was pushing seventy. Yeah, and yep. we looked like we made her day. <laughs> <laughs> Probably made her whole. We said hi to her, and it was just like, oh my god, <laughs> hello. <laughs> but, and knowing me and David, we were being very kind, and we were just being like, oh. I'm just wondering what the sights are here in uh, <laughs> here in Shoot, No, I was. We were on. <laughs> we I were on. In and I walked in with confidence. on like hotcakes. It was great. Um, <laughs> well, you saw the cows. <laughs> we know where. That's the first thing David asked. That's like, all I where wanted the to moving see. cows. No, it's the museum. The museum. <laughs> so, so it's you saw the cows and you saw the meth dealer. What else is there to see? The in botanical Shepherd? gardens. Um, botanical gardens were quite cute, actually. Okay. That's where it's, we came up with most still, of the ideas. It's still under construction, it seems. It's like half built. Are they are, are they like the one in Morwell where it's made by the work for the doll people? Most likely, yes. <laughs> yeah. It's like out, honestly, we had to cross a bridge. We had to go like we thought we were gonna get stabbed just getting to the botanical gardens. Yep. Yeah. Um there were cows to, outside too, which is pretty cow, sick. very fluffy cows though. Yeah. Good didn't moves. go to didn't go to Club Rawhide? No. Trust people. you to know the fucking club scene over there. Do you know okay, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna we, tell you like Club Rawhide. Guess what kind of club it is? A club. Oh fuck a fine no Cowboy chance. theme. It's a, it's a it's like a gay club, wouldn't it? No. For leather daddies. No. Oh, okay. Club Rawhide. Yeah. Cowboy. No. Where are we going Wait, wrong is this with a this? Blues Brothers themed club? It's a strippers. Oh. Club Rawhide. Come on. Are there poles? I would love Yes, there's poles. No shit, up, there's poles. Yeah. 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 You yeah. can't open a strip club if you don't have poles. Well, exactly. Man. I'm sure there are. Like, that's got to be like industry uh, code at that point. Yeah, that's, like, if you're going to open like up and get a license uh, for a strip club, what? Strip so, how many. There's the code, there's ha- no poles. How many poles are you going to have? You've got to have a minimum two. Yeah. So, right. so, what? If I go to a, in, into a club that just has stripper, just have people taking off their clothes in a room, no, not a strip club? That's a private, that's a residential address, in my opinion. You have poles. There's a pole code in a strip club. There has to be. Well, and it's a pole dancer, not a stripper. A stripper just takes off their clothes. A pole dancer obviously uses a pole. Yeah, yeah but this is a strip club. Like, I feel like if you're opening up a strip club, well, it's Obviously, this is a rural strip pop. club. It, so is, it is a very rural strip club. Um, yeah. So this is the only one, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, it's rough. I, I, it's the I, men's I, gallery of the country. Yeah. Hey, men's gallery is all right. Shut men's the fuck gallery up. Men's gallery is all right. I will not have a word against men's, ga- men's gallery. I'm men's gallery. Just on record, I've never gone to a strip club, Bullshit. obviously. <laughs> okay, <laughs> no, you want to stiff a strip, strip club in Melbourne, it's Kittens. Kittens is like the... Oh, I got a mate who runs security there. Yeah, so. well, yeah. And I know a girl who works security there. there. Um, is bad. Boy, I've got, I've got, I've got a good funny story from, uh, from, from the men's gallery. <laughs> that was a good one. I told it when I, I was going to TAFE at the time, and on Monday, like I went, I went there on a Saturday night for a friend's birthday, and then on the Monday, my first class of the day was a HTML class, and the teacher always asked us what we did on the weekend, and nobody would say anything, and he'd always get frustrated. So that day, boy, did I have something to tell him, <laughs> and I told him, I told him my story of men's gallery, and he never asked that question ever again the rest of the semester. So I like to you think broke I, him, John. So I live for the opening so introduction. I, I I like to think I was the hero um, in my class. And I kind of was because nobody else I, wanted to talk to me. Like, I've, yeah. I've seen a mate of mine pay a stripper in coins at Men's Gallery and it was the funniest thing I think I've ever seen today. Apparently that's a thing it's just in seeing, Canada. Seeing a girl just, 
just standing there, like real nice lingerie, just with her hands out, just and my mates just digging around in his wallet for coins, just like twenty <laughs> cent pieces at a time. I'm, I'm like, I'm so sorry, like for my f- awful behaviour, like. <laughs> Like you just got a private dance from a woman for twenty minutes, and then you're paying her at twenty cent pieces. Like that's awful. <laughs> where where is she gonna put the coins? This is what I'm saying. She just walked out. I literally where saw her with think? like, <laughs> like no, she's just like cupping them as she just walked out the door. I was just. Are like, we at the the <laughs> age of technology yet where they start accepting F boss? <clears throat> I'm sure. Right, where they come up to you, she's like, "Oh, is that a lap dance? Pay fifty bucks. She's like, do you take card? It's like, yeah, just swipe it here. So I I went. Not to even a, swipe, man. You can get one of those yeah, like pay the, wave. The pay, pay wave, wave like the insert it in your, in your wrist. I just insert it in your wrist. And then you're done. Oh yeah, like oh, a guy did that. All you need cool. is like an RFID tag. A guy did that in your wrist. A guy did that for his Opal card in Sydney. Exactly. Yeah, yeah he inserted it and then it got infected and he had to get taken out. But there's probably a surgical, like, clean way to do it. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah there you is. Just, you're yeah. Fucking, you're, if you're a person who needs to take many payments in a quick but it's, sort of it's actually scenario, crazy. Um, say you're a stripper, just get one of them things inserted in your wrist. <laughs> that's the, that's the, that's the event. This is what I'm saying. Or, 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 I don't carry cash. Or even nowadays. better, even better, you, you do it, you do cash. it and you put it in the lingerie, right? And then and then when you get the oh, real yeah. when you get the real panty sniffers in, right? You hand them the panties which has the RFID tag in, in the lining of it, and then they get they get the sniff and then they do the tap yeah. and they hand it back. And it's like it's a you make payment a whole experience this, in and up uh, to itself. This you make quick, the, you make you make the consumer excited about the payment process. This quick right? way payment God, stuff we need is JJ. crazy because like I was at I was at a club <laughs> for the first time in like eight months last Saturday and I walked in not having any cash being like I won't be able to get it I don't have any cash and I went to the bouncer and said oh can I pay card just not thinking he said yeah I went <laughs> yeah mate <laughs> alright so they got in the line went to the guy I'm like yeah you guys take card thinking they're going to pull out like a big FBOS machine she goes yeah like on her phone she had a little like yeah. lightning yeah, I've seen cable them attachment with yeah. a little pay wave I was like Twenty dollars gone something. like that. I'm just like me being in hospitality. Twenty dollars is a lot of money. Yeah. Yep. So I was very sad that all it took was a little hand motion and then twenty dollars of my. It's getting too easy to spend it's money. It's getting too, nowadays, way too easy to spend getting money. Way too easy to spend money. Like just the little incremental payments is just re- really adds up during the week. Like mm. Mm. coffees. Coffees are so easy to go. What do you think is like... I literally just tapped four bucks before we walked into the studio. No, no. Yeah, and like, but you didn't even think about it. No. Because that's a coffee for you. Like, yeah. I a, need a coffee range. You'll, be, you'll spend anywhere between three to six bucks on a, on a medium coffee. Yep. But it's like it's at a point where it's like you don't really care. You just tap to get the coffee. Yeah. I can see you itching and looking at that list, Dave. No, I got a list of bands in front of me, but we're talking about money. I love talking fair. about money. It is fair. <laughs> Yeah. No, no. So, okay. Locke and I, we went to Shepparton. A little bit of a day cake, right? Mm-hmm. We both needed yeah. it. It was a good bit of fun. But I figured, yeah. you know what? Let's get a bit of work done, right? And you put me and Locke in a room. We'll come up with bands up. Now, the one thing I really want to talk about, and I feel like this, I, I, I put it on my socials um, about a week ago, right? And it's gotten genuinely polarizing opinions on it. And more so interesting, it's gotten the polarizing opinion in a complete switch of gender, which is what I wasn't expecting. Do you believe... Mm-hmm. That the male lingerie should be more of a thing. This is funny because it does kind of wiggle into your RFID tag. Yeah, it like does. I'm, I'm expanding on <laughs> from that. Now, lingerie, obviously run by the female market, right? But you got to think about well, no, why. It's, it's a male market that sells okay, to females. But it's a male market that sells, which is really interesting, right? Because uh-huh. it, that's when I put, the, I put it on my socials. 80% of the feedback was from females all going, yes. Yes, we want to see male lingerie. Now so they want to see tr- some lacy little they boy, want boy to shorts. Now I'm not even fucking with you. 100. percent I'm sick of the range of underwear we have as men. Right? I want a bit more variety in my fabric. Right? Now if they were to introduce a really comfortable male lingerie, lacy, maybe a bit tight briefs, you know, with a bandolette that comes up that makes my ass pop, right, and my junk look good. I'm for it. I feel I'm like for it. I feel like, like that's the thing. Like you know, we say male lingerie, but you can't do like a one to one copy of like women's lingerie. You no, know it would be brief. It's got to be. Yeah, it's got to it, be brief. It's got to be suited to the male well, to the male body, right? Um, well. What do you think? Are you a jockey's guy? No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not the dad jock guy. My roommate is who walks around constantly in dad jocks. <laughs> respect. <laughs> yeah. I don't respect the dad jock man. What do we mean by the dad? The, the, the like the the, the, the old, budgie the smuggler. Oh, the Wait, old... your roommate. Your roommate runs around the budgie smuggler. Yeah, Alistair. Sorry, Alistair. I'm, I'm, I'm no. He, he is a full on. I would have da- picked him as a boxer man. No, man. He is a full on dad jock connoisseur. No. Every pair. Of I look jocks, at him completely differently. Now. Every pair of jocks he owns is dad jocks. I look at him completely and differently. He, and he and every certain, girl a certain kind of man can only wear the jock style because it's, it's, it's a lot the, of leg. 
It's a lot of leg. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of leg to fawn. It's a lot of, it's a lot of leg. But maybe that's what the ladies want. They want some more leg. Well, that's what I'm saying. For a male lingerie, I feel like it has to be the dad jock tighter. And I reckon, the, and this is what I'm getting at. Like, the, there's so much variety mm. in female undergarments, right? And especially when it comes to lingerie. Yeah. Now, why can't the men get it? And especially if the females are wanting it, right? They want to see men in this kind of stuff. I'm for it. I am so for it. Do you, think we're, do you think we're at a point in society where men can start happily wearing pantyhoses and stuff like this? I reckon if we not? made one, and like all it takes is just... You know those odd. Sure, few Japan's there. But yeah, no, but we're, we're not we're not talking about like a kinky boot situation where we're making like yeah, we're talking we're, we're making like the, every, the everyday style not shoes like, for it's my six month anniversary with my girlfriend coming up. I need to look nice for this. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna make and my girl has bought me some mandarin. Okay, like, hang on. Here's, some okay, perfect. Here's a perfect example. Okay, here's a perfect perfect situation where you would want some mandarin, right? You I love it. I was picked up, right? <laughs> the manger. I, I like it. <laughs> Here's a perfect situation where you want some manger, and I got a story to go with it. Your wedding night. Right? Yes, yeah, yeah. both story. of you pulling out the mandra yeah. and laundry. I heard. I heard about this. This was on the my brother, my brother and me podcast. Shout out to the McElroys. I love them very much. Uh, one of the one of the brothers, Travis, when he was getting married, right, he knew that like the wedding night's a big night, be- right? Big, big. You know, it's this. It's for him. It was the social <laughs> event of the season, right? And he wanted to look his best, right, for his for his new wife. Which respect, I, I I love that. And so he bought him. But the only option that was available to him in terms of mangere was silky black boxes, and that was it. Yeah. And so was, he bought them, and he wore them, and he took it like a champ, and he asked his brother to go and get him from his house because he forgot them. Oh. Which Classic was a classic wedding day move. Which was a, which oh was God. yeah, which 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 is a, I mean, you know, that's a thing in its own. But f- the fact is, that was the only. O- now, if he had more options to choose from than silky black boxes, I think he would have taken it. I just think you got to find the comedy when you when it gets to uh, the wedding of uh, the the wedding night, and you're both in the hotel room, and you both pull out honey bird birdette boxes at the same time. <laughs> and you're just like, oh. <laughs> honey birdette would be my go-to <laughs> retail. I'm saying if I was gonna if I was gonna get some mandra, I'd probably want to go to honey. Because they see like <laughs> I, I, I would cop the like the the gimmick jocks with like property of enter spouse name here on the back. But there's so much variety. Mm. What I'm getting at is yeah. we can even introduce a whole line of new fabrics, right? I I feel that, that your the, your, the, your idea is very very good, except for one little hiccup that I don't think a lot of women's lingerie have to deal with: body hair. Blokes have hair in odd places. No, women's lingerie deal with that too, dude. No, I know, but like they deal with it in a very specifically front facing area. Oh. Blokes, we're kind of a 360 in the crotchal region. I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you. Yeah. I'm hearing you. There's I feel like at that point, you just got to handle this it yourself. This is when I think this is when it got comes to down yourself. to, it comes to personal maintenance. And I feel like if you're, especially if you're deciding to dare wear yeah. the jock mandurai. style mandurai, uh-huh. not the brief style, the jock style. Oh, I would honestly actually love like someone who is like wearing the brief style just to shave like just just the, just the brief <laughs> just cut a, out a like, hair tan line. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the hair just tan wax line. Just the bit that covers the bottom. Yeah, the exactly. Like that would be hilarious. Like because uh, I know like it just hair like any material that has that sort of you know loose knit hair is gonna pop through. Mm-hmm. You're gonna have like pinching issues. You're going to have like a bunch of different like... Especially if it's lacy and silky exactly. as you're pulling you're, it down you're and just your gonna, hair's going to catch. Exactly, yes. Um, you and you, girls go through it too though. No, I know, I know. Personal but maintenance like I said, comes into it's play. It's usually just like a one like front V-shaped area they got to deal with. We got to do for the full 360 kind of dealing with that. So I like the idea but yeah, like if you're right, if it's up to you, it's your personal like if I want to look sexy, I'm going to shave all that off. I didn't realize there's some a nice lingerie between bras and bralettes. Like, I didn't even know that what the was... the fuck is a bralette? This is, so... <laughs> was it? Was it? Was oh, but, someone was explaining so it? So this. Us. So so. Is it, I, is it a training bra? Do I need to Google this? No. So essentially, is this a risky it, click? It, it's a bra without the li- with, without the cup and without the lining. Essentially, so it's Wait, just what? got. So it's oh, just it's just, a, it's it's just a, fabric around the. It's nipples. just a fabric around the nip. Essentially, so it's mainly designed for girls <laughs> who are wearing like laid singlets or who oh. are like just wanting to sleep in so it. There's, so there's no wires. So there's no wires. Yeah, there's yeah, no, yeah. There's yeah. no so support. There's no support. So it's just some support. There's like there's like you get a little bit of like. Strapping, but like that's it. This is what I'm learning. I'm learning this too. So like. it's like, so that's. <laughs> I still, where's, where's JJ? It's I crazy. Still, I know we chose the episode, right? I still have not come around firmly to the concept of cups, and I'll and I'm 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 gonna go right <laughs> on Dude, record it right is now. A science, Dude, no, but no, it's a fucking stupid fashion science. No, no, we're no, sitting well, here, and I'm buying jocks. I'm either a large or an XL, <laughs> and I'll, and it stretches and it fits. Now, when it comes to bras. I hate the notion that you can be a 34C, but then if you wanted to wear a D, you can wear a 32D. 
right? Because it's just it's it, just it, different it, conversions. It, though. it makes, but it's just make it simpler. Lingerie doesn't come in. Um, uh, to my understanding, lingerie does not come in the, those A B C blah, blah, blah. They come in like at large, small, blah blah blah. Like because they're no, they don't. They, come in, be like they come in numbers, and the numbers aren't consistent between shops. Do you know but why? Numbers, <laughs> but that's another thing. The numbers aren't even <laughs> consistent. Here's the thing. Here's the they thing. all run off their own value. Uh, they, no, no. they all do it to one of the designer he, things. Well, he, here's the thing. Do you know why men have a sizing system and women don't? It's because of war. That's what caused it. So in a oh, me- what is it good for? So okay. So the Absolutely so the standard the, the standard male sizing system came from the United States when they were gearing up for this is World War One, right? This is uh, way back in the, the day. The Great War. They were gearing up for World War One, and of course they were they needed uniforms, and because they had the draft, you're getting a bunch of different dudes in, and you need to put them all in uniform. Now, if you're going to mass manufacture uniforms, how do you do that and make sure that every uniform fits everybody? And of course, you know, military people are like, it's got to be clean and cut and crisp and all the rest of it. You know what I mean? You can't have no bugger in like, in like floppy uniform, Baggy right? pants. Baggy pants. It just can't happen, right? So they, what they did was is that they, they literally measured just about every single man in the army. And from that, they drew up, they like used that as their base for their statistics Made and worked curve. out a bell curve and came up with the sizing system based on that. Now the now women never had the never had a system that came through with that except for bras. Now in America again, this is in America. See, this is where John's going to bring the science and just absolutely. Well, this is why he's the producer. So I again, it. this is in America. So um, it was it was run through. Uh, I think it was a fashion. It was either a fashion house or a fashion magazine. I can't remember which is which. Um, so uh, yeah, I can't remember which is which, but. Uh, one of, it was either a fashion house or a magazine, and they had a uh, like kind not kind of a contest. They did a survey. They were like, "We want to measure women's um, cup sizes, right?" And they got a thousand women, and they measured them all up. Now, sp- specifically, of course, this is America in like you know the 30s and 40s, so they measured a thousand white women, right? And from that, they drew up the bra sizing system. Now, which which of course is broken. You've you've mentioned a few things, but it also doesn't work for a multitude of other reasons. Oh, I, I know. Um, it's it's such a stupid. Yeah, it's, it's a it was designed. It seems to, like a lot of females are still happy just to deal with. I'm like, surely there's an easier way. No, well, that's what I'm saying. I made this argument years ago. Like, and I was just like, surely we can get to a point where we can just just change it. Just one person, one company, just has to sit back and be like, fuck this. I'm not about B's, C's, and D's anymore. Let's go with the medium, smalls, and larges. Like, let's move into a but better that's system. See, but see, that system doesn't work either because, uh, especially with bras, there's a range of different body types. Yeah. That's that's what I'm saying. That's Maybe the problem. you start doing body type bras, but yeah, that's another thing, right? Um, which is essentially the cup system anyway, though. Yeah, it's the number yeah. then the cup, which is basically a. We're trying, a, a to re- we're trying to rebuild a system that apparently it is impossible to make better. Maybe, maybe <laughs> this is just what we have. No, maybe sure, this is what we have. I'm pretty sure the numbers at the start of it is the width. It's, it's, it's the it's, width it's, of the, the back. Cost. It's your circumference. Yeah, yeah. Right? It's and the then the cup the is back. the depth, is my understanding. Yeah. Right? So the cups don't really change. It's the But that's what I'm getting at. Someone who wears a 34C, apparently, now granted, anyone... We're all guys in a room right now. We're all guys in a room. JJ's not here to back it up. We are the worst four people to have this conversation. We are probably literally, and especially me. Like, fuck if I we should have just stuck to right. Mandurae. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I, I know what we're talking about when we come to the Mandurae. All right, now that's happening. I just now, I want velvet or silk on my skin. I just want that. Yeah, I just want more variety with my fucking jockwear. <laughs> no, all I'm right. for it. Velvet, think, velvet briefs would be. And I think in about. all of this, I would drape myself in velvet. Yeah, at, to stanza. <laughs> <laughs> and I think in this conversation, what we've established though is, yeah, like like I said right from the outset, you can't do a one to one copy of women's lingerie to men's lingerie. Like yeah. that's not going to work. You need to like tailor it specifically to. The the male body type, but also to um, the female gaze. Like, it's got to be what they want to see. Yeah. Oh, exactly, right? with the mandre. Yeah. Yeah, yeah of right? course. Because I, ta- I guarantee you that's what that's that's how bras are built. No woman is buying an uncomfortable bra that costs $2 million from Victoria's no. Secret. Okay, I guarantee you that's a dude purchasing that bra, right? Yeah. Well, um, I, have I told you the story about how my mate went to go buy, he, buy his girlfriend a, a bra for, a, for Christmas or something? Oh, we, God, that would have been we, scary. So it's boys, a whole thing, so bro. Three boys were, so, I'll tell the story quick. Three boys... Boys walk into Honey Bird at me, Boz and Kane, Kane's girlfriend. A woman comes from behind the counter and goes, oh, hi, boys, how can I be today? She, Kane goes, oh, yeah, I'd like to buy, um, just like to get a set for my girlfriend. Is that right? She goes, yeah, what size is she? 
And Kane just kind of with his hands went, oh, <laughs> <laughs> <spit."> <laughs> And the, what, the, the retailers kind of just looked at him and just been like, I think you need to call your girlfriend. <laughs> because this is just not going to work unless you exactly know like what is going on. So he's trying to do slices with his hands. Uh, it's, a, it's about a hand and a half? Yes, he's yeah. literally going... He's, he's a bit more than a handful, yeah. He's literally going a bit more than a handful. It's my hands like, are pretty big, so I've got to like adjust that. Can I, can I tell you my dad's story for this? Sure. So my dad was going to... Did the exact same thing. He was going to buy... He was buying gonna buy a for my mum right um oh, so how do you know this story yeah, I know. <laughs> he told me we, oh, fair very enough. Open. That's fair enough because but also because it's a hell of funny story right so he walks into like a bras and things or something like an equivalent right and um at the whole the same time he felt like he shouldn't be there because he felt like a bit of a pervert being in there right I found even though he was there for a completely legitimate reason he was going to buy a gift for his missus like it's all good right um, and he felt, and he started looking around. He's like, "Oh God, I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to buy." And at the same time, he's got the anxiety of, "I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be here." And then, right, he's walking around, and then literally, like, because the store's not very deep up the back of the store, they got the changing rooms, and this lady just like out of the blue, just like opens up the curtain, and there she is, right, in in just her undies, saying, "Excuse me, can I have this or whatever it was?" And he just goes, "Okay, nope," and I'm getting the fuck out of here. And and literally, he's like halfway out the door, but the whole time the shop owner's keeping an eye on him and goes, "Okay, he's freaking out. He's gonna fly the coop," and makes a beeline for him and totally calms him down because apparently <laughs> she sees this like all the, all day long, and she's like, "Oh hi, are you here to buy you know some underwear, f- some lingerie for 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 your girlfriend or your wife?" And he goes, "Uh yeah yeah uh you know what I, uh, yeah okay yeah." And she goes, "It's okay, it's okay. You just come over here, come and have a look." at some of these see what you think and then she left for a minute and then and then the anxiety came he's like no i shouldn't be here i gotta leave suddenly boom she immediately makes the beeline back like this chick was on it like she knew exactly what was up right and again ask the question well what's what's your wife's bra size this is how my dad knows my mom's bra size one day he he made the bet with my mum. You know what? I reckon my chest is bigger yeah. than yours. Yeah, thought, There's I, not a bloke yeah. under the sun who has not sat back and gone, "Man, I can wear my 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 girl's bra." That's right. So so you know what they did one day? They broke out the tape measure, and it turned out his chest was exactly the same size as my mum's. So he just went. Um, it's this big. It's the size of my chest. And so they measured up my mum's uh, lingerie based on his measurements. <laughs> that's excellent. Hey and man, by the way, by the way, my dad wasn't cheap. MacGyver. This is like, this is like three or four hundred dollar lingerie. Like he spent good money on this. You know what I mean? So it was like an up up market kind of a joint. But yeah, <laughs> that's the story. It's great. I respect. <laughs> I, I just respect retail workers for being patient with stuff like that as well. Oh, yeah. I think it's really indicative of the the sex industry. Yeah. Now uh, that leads into like a brilliant conversation. Not uh, when I say sex industry, I mean like the, the lingerie the, and sex the, toys. So you know, like the, reta- the retail side, the retail side of it is what I meant. Uh, <laughs> what I'm yeah, getting not at the, is not the service side. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you reckon is more uncomfortable for a man to buy? His girlfriend lingerie or his girlfriend a vibrator? Lingerie. lingerie. Oh, the vibrator. It- the no, vibrator, hundred percent, dude. Lingerie. No, because that's fun for everyone. Yeah, I know, but like the oh, blind- lingerie is fun that for is, me too. That is why. I feel that like is it's why. easier for for. I feel like it might be easier for someone to walk into a sex shop than it is to walk into a lingerie store. Me being a man. Yeah, I don't get uncomfortable in either situation, but that's just me though. Like, yeah, I'll no, walk okay. in, I'll just be like, "Hey, I'm buying my girlfriend this set." It's like, what there size is- there? Yeah, like fucking thirty four something. And I'll, I'll actually do a little bit of research. The idea being, I'm not going to get uncomfortable walking in, being like, "Can I get that dildo back there?" Mm-hmm. Right? Or can I get that fucking nice lacy, lacy pink set? With the throw-in bandolettes, like fuck yeah, like I'm ready to buy. Yeah, either. but like, let's be honest. If you walk into a sex store, you're not picking things off the wall. There's like shelves. Oh yeah, but what I'm getting at is I'm not opposed to grabbing it and maybe I'm even going ask the counter and being like, yeah, so I'm trying to buy my girlfriend a vibrator here. Um, what are the options? Like, I see this one here is kind of just a standard set, very. Like, but you just can, a long but you pencil, can do, you, you right? can like, review that stuff more <laughs> easily. I find. Yeah, uh, aside from laundry, I agree with you, but that's what I'm getting at. So, like, what is you've said? Laundry harder to buy, yeah, I think and you're so. going sex toy harder to buy. Okay, well, it's just that, that there is a stigma of like, okay, if you and I've bought stuff online before, when it shows up on your credit card, it's just like miscellaneous debit. Love it. And then when it comes to you, like the packaging, it's just like it, there's no obvious sign that it's a sex toy, like on the outside of the packaging. Like if I order something from like mm. Culture Kings or whatever, it just says Culture Kings in big words on the outside of the box or the the package. Sex toy stuff is just like it's a brown box. With your address on it, and that's it. Then when you crack it open, then it's the fun stuff. So if you're buying lingerie online, say you knew what you 
partner's size was, it would come and it would say where it was from on the outside of the box and it was on your credit card thing. It would be like from blah, 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 blah. But like sex toy stuff is very much like... And that That's could just great. be like people who... Uh, probably buying it for the wrong reasons, whether it's for their their miss like their their mistress or like whatever. It's all very just discreet. You're not going to put it on your credit card statements or whatever, because then like you know, especially like if you did it right before you went for a new job, and they were like, "Can we just get your bank statements from the last thing out just to see what your your old earnings were?" And you're just like, "Oh yeah, no, there you go." And this is like you know, massive dildo from <laughs> wherever on your bank statements, and your new employer's just like, "Huh, fair enough." <laughs> Like I get it from that aspect, but like I, I don't think like I, I would personally be uncomfortable doing either. Mm. But like I understand from like a mass sort of thing is like yeah, going to buy lingerie. It's not exactly the most comfortable thing to do, but like if you're doing it for the you know your girlfriend or whatever, and it's like you know, it's it's acceptable. I, like, like I believe it's more I, personal I, I to think, buy the the sex toy no, than it is the lingerie. I yeah, like, I that's I, if I had to find but difficulty, look, it would be in the sex toy. In both situations, and you're right with like the the you know retail attendants. They know exactly why you're there for both situations. Oh, you're yeah. going into a laundry store, they're going to be as helpful as possible because, like, you got no idea what you're doing. Yeah. No. Your girlfriend's giving you, like, I get, uh, you know, I'm, I'm this size in this brand, I'm this size in this brand, I want this, you know, mm. you know, whatever. And you're just like, I have to translate that to this retail person who hopefully knows what the hell I'm talking the about. The last thing you want to be in that situation is too confident about what you think you know. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, that is. I, and <laughs> I will go into a situation like that, like my last girlfriend. And I'll had, bleed ignorant, ignorance. Yes. On it. I will like just be like, look, she told me this, this, and this. I need you to fill in it's the like, gaps. And, I've, and just from subtle conversations, I've picked up this, this, and this. Yeah. You work it out. Yeah. yeah. See, <laughs> this, is what, this is what you get. You don't go in there and be like, I want this. It's like, man, yeah. like, I'm this fucking is, fine. Okay, actually, this, oh. is, this is a conversation. We're gonna, I just want to deviate for a sec. I don't understand why when you go into a barbershop or a haircut, like to go get a haircut, they ask you what you want. That's their job. Thank mm -hmm. you. They get paid to know how to cut hair that suits your style. So right Thank now, you, I agree with you. You have that solid like side part and it's just shaved down. Apparently, according to my barber, I need that little bit, when the side part is, I need that little bit extra on the like the short side to make my head not look ridiculous, Yeah. right? He told me that. I would be like, I want to go get like, like same as yours, get the full like side part, like a nice neat cut and just shave the side. He's like, mm -hmm. no, 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 don't do that. Everyone goes into a bloody hairdresser going like, I want this, I want this, I want this. That guy is paid, or guy or girl is paid to know exactly how to cut your hair well, because it. they've been through the training of how to do it. And I feel really bad being like, yeah, I want this. I'm just like, dude, you, this is a canvas. Yeah. You do you what you Have you never said that though? I've no, I, I've started yeah. to do it. Once I started going to barber shops, like proper yeah. Yeah. like barber shops, where like these people are trained to do, especially like in the last 10 years, the whole men's hair thing has blown up. Mm. These people are trained to know how your head looks with certain cuts and styles and they will, and even like before you did that, they would be like, maybe we should do this, maybe we should do this. But I don't want to be going into a place telling these people, it's like anyone that comes to me and be like, can I get a cocktail? And then they're trying to tell me how to make the cocktail. I'm like, no, 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 no. I get paid to do this. I've been making cocktails for a decade. I know how to make a cocktail. I don't need to be told how to do my job. Same as barbers. They shouldn't be, and they're very good at what they do. Like my guy now, Knows his stuff back to front. He's unreal. Does the, like the sickest fades I've ever had. But the first time I ever went to him, I'm just like, dude, what do you think? What would suit my head? And he goes, oh, I reckon you should do this, this, and this, and we'll see how it goes. And I'm just like, done. Make it happen. Do you believe in barbershop loyalty? Uh, now there dude, is a yeah. big loyalty so program is, with females going to so their salons. I, I've been to the. So I don't go to a barber. I've gone. I've gone to the same hairdresser since I was so for fifteen years now. So he's got your hair records on lock. I go to a woman. Hey. hey. I go to I've been to Joe for who knows how long and I might have to and only recently have I've had to use another girl who works there, Jess. Mainly because um, Joe is starting to move into retirement, which is fine. She's allowed to do that. Um, but Jess is gonna be going on maternity leave soon. Which means I'm gonna have to look for a new barber. <laughs> oh, no, it's dude, a big thing for us. It's a big thing, dude. It's, it's like it's not just like in the nail industry the same thing. So my mother was obsessed with like na with like nail beauty when I was a kid, and we used to go to this particular nail salon at Parkmore Shopping Centre, which is like a half hour drive away from us, just to get her nail. No, sorry, we went to Chadston first, right, to the ladies there, and then she moved to Parkmore, so we drove to Parkmore, and then she decided to get a house out in the country, so we had to drive an hour and a half into the countryside so my mother could get her nails done. You've got to look after those cuticles. That, loyal that loyalty is fierce. Yeah. Well, 
this right. is why loyalty cards come into play and all that jam. Like uh, loyalty is a big but thing. But it's not no, no, I completely not, agree. Not, with in, not in hair and nail care. That's what I'm saying. It's not to the. It's not loyalty to the business. It's loyalty so it's to, to the, the employee. Yeah. It's like you follow it's that employee from business to business. Sure it's same with yeah. It, it, it follows exactly the same and with barbers and so, and like hairdressers. I reckon, I reckon tattoo artists are the exact same way. And tattoo artists are the same because I feel like you probably have a dedicated artist. The guy who done it, one guy on you all. You got that. one guy that you've done your whole yeah, arm on. Yeah, and I have extreme loyalty I've to got, him. And, uh, so if he would have got another tattoo shop, a lot I would of my mates him. like they're the same. They go have like one or two guys they go to. That is it. Like yeah. For for the people at home, just to know what we're talking about, David has a full arm sleeve. And it's like it's like it's like mostly done. I think it's mostly done as well. I'm booked in for this done. Sunday to finish it off. Right, it's been yeah. years so in the making. It's like it's like ninety percent complete at this point. Yeah, so that's that's just for context for the people playing at home. But um, I think it's so funny that like there is this loyalty with like more craft based services mm. or yeah, trades, definitely, which is really interesting. Yeah, no, like, let's say, like, we, I go to the same guy at the same barber shop. Like, I, I don't go to anyone else at that barber shop. I get my guy. Have you, how long do have you, you been call using? in advance? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Call in advance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I usually call in advance if I need something done real quick. I'll duck in and see if he's there. I'm like, dude, you got to you know spare half hour. He's like, oh, yeah, just uh, come back in an hour, or whatever. He's usually pretty good about it, and because like he's just around the corner from my house, all my roommates we all go to the same guy, and he always asks about like whoever's there. He asks about the other two. Does your barber do beers? Uh, yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah. there's a big yeah. thing now. That's the big like, thing now. So my, my roommate went there last week to get his get his hair done before they had this big footy function um, Saturday night after Shout their game. Alistair. Yeah, no, it was the other one. It was oh. uh, it was uh, Wilson. Anyway, he goes to the same guy that me and Alistair both go to, and he's like, "Oh, how are the boys? Haven't seen him for a bit because I haven't had my hair, hair done for a while." Yeah, he goes, "How are the boys? Like How are they?" So it's like it's that level of service. That I'm That's just like, brilliant. I'm going to keep coming back to you, man, because like you hook me up. It's half the price for hair and beard that I used to pay where I used to go and you do a better job. So I'm going to keep coming back. And the fact that it's literally a two minute walk from my front door, ah, just the icing on top. That is proof that customer service sells. Yeah. That is the loyalty mm-hmm. program of barbershops, nail salons, anything artsy and craftsy about the body or anything. I think it's those kind customer of like, service sells. A lot yep. of those businesses, I think those brick and, those style brick and mortar businesses probably will stay. Yeah. yeah. But well, because like, there's no, no way you I can do it get, online. Yeah, I can't get my hair cut online. Yeah. Of course not. I can book online. That's what I'm saying. Like maybe they, maybe they do become. This is where Instagram starts to become a huge tool for these guys because they can start just doing house calls and take yeah. away all their. That's overheads. that's 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 the thing I was thinking about. You could probably do like an Uber for hairdressers, where like you just call a barber over to your house and then they come yeah. and they buzz. Do, uh, have we all seen that scene from The Office where Will Ferrell has ordered in a barber to come to the to the office to do him up because he can't be stuffed going to the brick and mortar shop? No, but I it's was such a power move, is what it is. I, I, <laughs> right? no, I was thinking. I was thinking of the episode of Hawaii Five O where. They have this. Like, there's like this minor side character who's you'd like him, Dave. He's he's a barber in Hawaii, but before he was a barber in Hawaii, he was he was a lawyer in New York, and he came out to Hawaii to like because he wanted to get away from the law. He wasn't interested in studying law. His dad forced him into it. But then he goes back into being a practicing lawyer, and because being a practicing lawyer, this is through the episode. Um, later on, we find him again. He's a traveling barber. He doesn't have a brick and mortar shop anymore, so he just goes from house to house. Cutting people's hair because that way hmm. he can do that as a side business while he's also lawyering. Dude, there's a low key like <laughs> low key idea there. That yeah. if it's not capitalized on, fuck. We got the man, the manjare and traveling barber shops from this episode. That's it. Fruitful. I've still I've still yet to find a barber. Is actually my problem. I actually do want to get my hair cut again. I really do. Because remember, remember when we went? Yeah, right? you'd be a good canvas. What you, what you uh, need is you need to find a barber who really respects your beard and wants to treat your beard with respect. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. Because and the guy the guy that we went to, really good about the beard. beard oils. Oh, boy. Yeah. They'll, they'll give you all the trimming. The, the guy that Dave and I went to, that he took me to, really good about the beard. Problem was he wasn't good about the hair, in my opinion. And I don't say that he was bad. Like, he's a very skilled professional, right? Very skilled in trade. But again, same problem. I, I went in and I had no idea what they... I just wanted to get my hair cut and I wanted it... What I definitely knew for sure is I wanted to get it off the back of my neck, right? Because it was... The end of summer was bloody hot, right? But... And then the other thing I wanted is I didn't want to look like a white supremacist, right? Those were the two big things for me because it's very easy... If I, if I do... If I do like a buzz cut, like do very short hair like I used to do when I was a kid, I look at myself in the mirror and I go, I look like a bloody criminal, right? I, I look like someone who's going to burgle a house, Right, we or, don't want that. John. You know, I don't want. I don't want that. Yeah. I didn't want that look. Don't be afraid to just say to your barber, man. Like, hey, don't make what me do look we like think? a criminal. That's what yeah. I. That's what I. That's what I said to him. I said, listen, yeah. all, all I want is I. Uh, and you were there, and I was like, 
Or, and also, by the way, Dave, I'm going to put you on blast here a little bit. The reason why I wanted you there too is because you know what's going on with hair and I figured you'd have some input. But it's to Ricky's point. Everyone is different. I think he can't rock but, the style but, that I but, want. But you couldn't pick up the ball because you could see that the guy was fumbling in the middle of the court because I said that to him and he Then went, he's just not a good barber. Uh, he's just not a good barber because you, you're meant to be able to go to the barber and go, hey, man. I'm not trained 10 plus sh- years in cutting fucking he, hair. He should be able to clock your head and just be like... He should be able to look at you, move this the hair style. up and down, go, all right, that's your skull shape. That's how much hair you have. This is how thin it is. It doesn't curl, it's straight. And he should go, all right, I know what cut I need to rock here. If you were to give him the permission and go, go right ahead. And you're honestly like a barber's dream. Yeah, like, I know. Like have a really the job. canvas. You have like long hair, long beard. You can go like, all right, we can start from scratch. We yep. can go all the way back. We can go halfway back. We can do anything with your hair, especially. Oh, yeah. Like, that's the thing. If you walk into a, a barber who knows what he's doing, he can be like, you are giving me so many options right now. I have so many ideas. I'm just going to try yeah. whatever I want. And that's a good barber. That's what a good that barber is. I shouldn't have barber. to jump in. Yeah, that's exactly. It. So I've, I've still got to find that person. Uh, and uh, and with that, uh, I think we're going to we're gonna call it here today. I want to say thank you to all my guests for joining me today. I want to thank you, thank David, Lockie, and Ricky. Thank, thank you, you all much. for coming no by. No worries. And uh, uh, with that, uh, you know, this has been Piper. Oh, one more announcement real quick before we end. We are now on Spotify. We oh, are. We are now we are. on Spotify. So, yeah. yes, we are for real. Um, so yeah, pretty yeah. hype. Yeah, I know. Dude, only, only seven I know. episodes. Does you that ju- take a jump hate. on that jump on the yeet. Spotify app right now and search Pint Party? I will. Right, and yeet. it is there. Go ahead. By the way, so if you're listening to us, and and I, I don't know, a lot of people have asked me, are, are you on Spotify? Now we are. By all means, please, please, please jump on there, follow us there, listen to us there, or wherever you want to listen to podcasts. It's I'm, I'm easy breezy, right? But if you but if you're all about that Spotify life like me, please by all means listen to it there. And if you've been meaning to get some friends on, but again they're all about the Spotify life and they're like, oh, I don't want to download a separate app to listen to one podcast. I feel you. Please tell a friend about the podcast. Tell them we're on Spotify now. We're it's still so on easy. iTunes. We're still on iTunes. We're still everywhere else you you want to find a podcast. Right, um, but we're now also on Spotify. So please tell a friend about that. We are too. We are so too. Cool. There we go. See, Ricky's having a suss of it right now. I, I have, I have found it. It is live right now. Beautiful right? and yellow. Looking oh yeah, good. it's all there. And uh, with that, this has been Pipe Party. Cheers. 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 This podcast is part of the Heart of Fact Podcast Network. For more of this and our other podcasts, head to heartofactstudios.com.au.